Today's brief lecture will cover a basic introduction to the charter schools topic, including a discussion of the resolution, some pro and con arguments, and some thoughts on Wang. So to begin, um, as you're probably aware at this point, the uh, resolution uh, for NSDA nationals is on balance. Charter schools are beneficial to the quality of education in the United States. So let's kind of talk about a few key terms in the resolution. Uh, charter schools, quality of education, and of course on balance, which just kind of refers to uh, weighing and uh, the debaters will need to do in some discussion of potential framework arguments. So first of all, what are charter schools and what role do they play in the education system? Charter schools are public schools. Uh, they're free. Uh, they operate with autonomy from traditional school districts in that they're uh, schools where they're uh, generally funded in two ways. One, primarily by the government. Uh, so people who run uh, charter schools can access uh, government funds. And then two, there are usually some sizable contribution from outside supporters, from board members, uh, to the charter school um, itself. And what basically they're given a charter. The charter allows them to operate, hence uh, the term charter schools. And as the evidence states, they're given flexibility in curriculum, the structure of the school day and the year, their own budgets and management. Um, they're not required to participate in collective bargaining, which means they don't need to be uh, part of the, the school district's union. The teachers in there are not unionized. Um, and then they're just basically held accountable uh, for the outcomes based on the 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 you know based on what the individuals and the entity that authorizes them that provides the charter um, says uh, there is this evidence also indicates there are 43 states uh, in Washington D.C. now have laws that permit the operation of charter schools and there are around 7,000 of these um, that serve approximately five percent of all students in the United States. Uh, they've grown steadily says so over the last 10 years and they're. Before that, you know, they existed. They started in the, uh, in basically in the 1990s. So uh, they've been around at this point for 20, 25 years, um, but they've grown a lot uh, over the last 10 years. So those are what charter schools are. Charter schools are kind of can be pretty concretely defined. Um, they can operate a little bit differently under different rules, obviously, depending on the states. It's the states that really uh, govern education, but um, that's what charter schools are. Now, quality of education, I mean, that's kind of a, uh, a term that you know can take some debating and will be part of your framework debates and part of kind of assessing the pros and cons of charter uh, school education. Um, different educationers and actors is kind of can imagine according to UNESCO which is the United Nations Education Scientific and Cultural Organization um, have different ideas of what kind of is included with quality of education but I think as this evidence indicates there are kind of some important uh, things that you could consider. You have uh, the uh, individual, right? You have uh, basically kind of three broad principles, uh, the ex equity of access and outcomes, right? So you're looking at a few things. Are, is it equitable? What is the outcome? And are individual rights protected? Those are all things that are kind of very important to kind of determining what a quality of education is. And I encourage you to kind of just Google this term and, and, and search it. It's not a concrete thing. Obviously, different advocates and different individuals are gonna have different ideas as to what a quality of education is and what's important, which will kind of help you in you know, your weighing arguments is are charter schools on balance desirable and undesirable and in your framework debates. And really in these questions of weighing, I think that you can discuss a few key issues. First of all, you can look at outcomes versus equity. So maybe maybe charter schools have, say, a small increase, demonstrate that there's a small increase in test scores uh, for the people who participate in them. But what, are they equitable? Um, there is a lot of good evidence that says charter schools result in segregation um, of schools. Now, yeah, believe it or not, in the modern era, some people are saying that this segregation can be good, but if we're gonna say that segregation um, is bad, right? And we're gonna have, but we're gonna say that, you know, there is an improvement in the academic outcome in the test scores. How do you compare those two and which values become important? What about outcomes versus rights? When we're talking about rights, we're probably ta primarily talking about the rights of disabled students. Um, and then look, I'll switch it. I'll say, well, what about equity? Um, equity versus outcomes like well I'm just that's just flipping the side right um, so we could be looking at framework questions of outcomes for social justice 
how do you weigh what if you know one side wins that there's an improvement in math scores and the other side uh, wins that there's a reduction in English language art schools like what happens uh, so what is quality education and how that matters is uh, very important and I think that part of the value of this topic is that it really uh, encourages students to think through these questions we can say this topic is about charter schools, which it obviously is. Um, and you can find a lot of evidence, you know, as is in our evidence packet on both sides of the debate as to how effective charter schools are. But until you kind of really think about what does a quality education mean and what parts of an education are important in determining its quality, uh, then it becomes difficult to assess and of course difficult to determine the outcome of the debate. So I think that that, that is also a question uh, that I strongly encourage you um, uh, to research, to think about, because I think in your weighing arguments, uh, it, it, it becomes a fundamental question, even as important as, you know, your kind of general arguments and evidence about whether charter schools are good or bad. Okay, so let's look at kind of the advantages or reasons that um, you know, the pro arguments, what are, what are, why are we going to get improved educational outcomes? Obviously, when the charter school started in the 1990s, we didn't really have any kind of concrete evidence uh, for why there are going to be improved educational outcomes. So we have warrants or reasons um, why it would be the case that there could be educational outcomes. And of course, if we see some studies now, of course, in, you know, in, in terms of educational studies, you know, 20 years is not a lot of a lot of time, but if we see some reasons for improved educational outcomes, okay, then we can tie, we have our warrants to tie that, uh, to tie the data in um, to provide reasons, uh, to provide evidence for our argument that it's going to improve educational outcome or quality of education. First of all, right, charter schools have more autonomy. Some people say that schools are still constrained by the bureaucracies that they operate in. Um, some people say that they have more accountability because, look, they could lose their authorization to operate. Um, the only thing that could kind of be equivalent in, this, in an education context is if a school district is so bad, um, the state may take over the school district. But that's very rare and takes a lot, a lot of time. Uh, there's, you know, you could also say that, look, uh, that uh, parents choose uh, to send their kids to charter schools. So maybe once they make a choice, they're happier with the school and they become more invested in the educational outcome. There's obviously additional outside financial support. Um, you know, obviously school districts do receive some support from parent groups and, you know, fundraisers and those types of things, but it, it doesn't really uh, compare at all to the amount of outside funding that um, charter schools uh, get from donors. Um, you can also find that uh, charter schools are very committed to getting uh, the, their students into college. Uh, that's an important part of the educational experience. A lot, and so that focus can obviously direct academics in that direction. Other people say like there's a very kind of strong commitment to discipline, a quote unquote, no excuses philosophy that you have to really do your work. If you don't, they, they you know, don't tolerate excuses. They don't, um, you know, kind of allow, you know, the kids to kind of fail over and over again and just hold their hands. And there is like a good amount of recent evidence um, that really kind of points in the direction of that um, being effective. Uh, there's also an argument about teacher diversity, that charter schools have more uh, same race teachers uh, for their minority students than regular um, schools that tend to most, uh, regular public schools that tend to mostly have white teachers. Um, they could say that they can kind of target more vulnerable populations. Um, other people say, look, it puts more pressure on the traditional public sector that there has to be a push, right, into the traditional public sector for, um, you know, that these the education there, like because the charter schools are doing well, that puts pressure on the regular schools to improve. Um, other people say they're more efficient, that there's less bureaucracy than you would normally find in public schools. Now, in terms of like evidence, right, so those are reasons why uh, charter schools may improve, but what are the evidence um, for improved outcomes? Well, you know, studies uh, showing increases, um, there's studies showing increases in ELA scores and in math scores as well. Um, you know, these are probably true. There's probably some small, if you really look at all the studies, um, there's probably some small increase over time, um, especially for minority students in these particular areas. Now, these studies 
do have limitations. Um, you know, obviously, like public schools, they take everyone, even the worst student. Um, unless you're a discipline problem, you're really not going to get like kind of kicked out of a public school. It has to be it has to be kind of extreme. Um, but, you know, no excuses if, if you're kind of having too much academic trouble or discipline trouble. The threshold for being removed from a charter school uh, is much greater than being removed from a regular public school. Right. So this kind of kind of shows that the students that are left. Um, of course, they're going to have kind of higher scores than schools that include everybody. Um, there's also kind of limitations by state. I mean, usually in any any given study only has the data available for one state, though. Some studies have what's called a meta study when you look at all the states kind of across the board. There could be other factors that, you know, you may have a study that says, well, over this period of time, academic outcomes improved. Sure, but maybe the economy improved over that period of time as well. Um, you know, these schools obviously have more resources, which maybe, you know, in a way is just a reason that they could be better, right? As I said, they have a lot of private contributions um, coming in. Obviously, these are relatively young. I, I alluded to that earlier. You know, it says over the last decade, charter schools have grown a lot. Um, so we don't really have a lot of data. We have some data, um, you know, that's been produced uh, that, you know, shows that there are gains or limitations um, to the data itself. But this, this data, you know, it's only 5% of our overall education system. It's really only grown in the last 10 years. So it's really not a lot of data. Um, so you can look at the data and say it really doesn't demonstrate a, a huge improvement or much of a kind of meaningful change, especially if they um, are, uh, you know, kind of funded. And a lot of these studies are conducted by organizations um, that are really kind of funded and exist to uh, support charter schools. Um, so. You know, uh, you know, there are some limitations to the study. Some people say the students are cherry picked. It's just better students end up in the charter schools. Now, I don't, I, I don't think in most cases they're cherry picked. They, they can maybe have some specialized charter schools, but a lot of usually it's the case that most students are accepted into charter schools by lottery. Um, so there's not really a lot of cherry picking that goes on. There could kind of be some reverse cherry picking that that occurs when all the uh, because all the students. Uh, you know, the, the ones that aren't as strong or just, or I shouldn't say as strong, but really kind of weak students who have a lot of discipline problems, um, they're going to get pushed out of the charter school and um, kind of end up back into the regular public school system that uh, kind of hurts their grades or hurts the schools, like, you know, the assessment, the overall assessment of the grade that kind of made the school get, so to speak, right, for its, for its outcomes. Um, you can look in some specific areas that I think have a lot of potential to be unique advantage or contention ground. You know, there's, there is good evidence that says that it doesn't, that minority students who are in charter schools, um, their grades, their academic or outcomes or however we wanna, whatever we wanna call it, do improve in these charter schools environment. Uh, there's evidence that says that they're better off for Native American, they're better for Native American students. Uh, there's some evidence that says that they don't have as aggressive of a disciplinary structure and they're not as tied to uh, kind of what you know, the normal kind of regular criminal justice system. So it reduces the school to prison pipeline, which you can read about, which is another public forum topic. Um, there are also kind of some, obviously some, it might be better for English language learners in STEM, the science, technology, engineering, and math education, uh, which you could find some competitiveness uh, impacts to, though obviously it's small as they're only 5% um, of the school system. So those are some specific areas you could look for arguments to as to why as you know why charters charter schools are on balance desirable. You could say in this particular area they improve educational outcomes in that area is really important. Now, what are some kind of reasons that charter schools hurt education? One of the big ones is that a claim that they drain uh, public uh, school funds. Now. Uh, obviously, if you know student A goes from public school to a charter school, that the funds, so to speak, from that student just kind of follow that student to the charter school, right? And then, so yes, there's less funding kind of in public education, but there are fewer students for public education to support. Now, the flip side of that is like, look, obviously, when you have more students in a school district, like X percentage of funding, a certain amount of funding for each of the students is going to go to support the administrative costs of running the school, the buildings, right, the administrators, 
um, you know, who obviously have higher salaries than, than the teachers, right? That there are kind of all of these uh, things. That, so it, it is kind of a, a net reduction, probably, so to speak, in money that's spent on education, public education, although some of the costs are freed up. And, you know, this is a huge issue now with the coronavirus, right? Like public schools are, are really struggling. You know, they receive a lot of funding for most, you know, look at New York. New York schools receive an enormous amount of funding. New York school districts from the state. The state budgets are in a lot of trouble because of the coronavirus. They're already feeling that effect. To kind of take more money away from kind of public schools at this time, as long as you win that initial link, uh, could, you know, have a further like deleterious effect on education. And I really kind of, it's an angle I encourage you to pursue. There's a huge debate within the literature about segregation. Um, there's a couple, you know, ba the basic argument is that the uh, charter schools tend to recruit uh, minority students and often minority students of a particular race and that this is uh, kind of results in increased segregation. And there is some good evidence um, that kind of sh that does conclude that there is kind of a net increase in segregation. It's not large, um, but that it has contributed to segregation uh, in schools. It makes it harder for public schools to kind of be less segregated too because um, you know, the charter schools are taking out minor taking minority students out of their uh, schools. Now, then, of course, you can say there's also some aggregation or excuse me, economic segregation, because um, these these, uh, you know, students are also tend to be poor that are recruited um, by by charter schools. So um, there's a segregation that results. There's a huge debate about like maybe. Um, and this can kind of get down to some framework questions and some value questions, right? In the past, we had segregation where like minorities, so especially like blacks and Hispanics were not allowed in white schools. Everyone agreed, well, not everyone, but you know, we changed our attitudes, Brown v. Board, right? People, um, you know, people have already obviously resisted this. Whites have resisted this in many different ways, right? But kind of most people think that this type of segregation, forced segregation, we'll call it, is bad. In this case, we have voluntary segregation, right? We have more minority parents in, enrolling their students um, in schools uh, where they think that there are more minority teachers and that they can get more attention um, and that they're better off. So there's like voluntary segregation. So within that debate, within that literature, there's a debate itself about whether or not that's so bad. Maybe it's a good thing um, from minorities. So this is like a very big debate. I would say that you know, within the charter school literature, there's kind of this debate about like academic outcomes, right? Consisting of kind of reasons and now kind of more studies. And then there's this really big debate about uh, segregation and its effects. So it's a huge issue. There's also kind of an issue related to disabled students, which I would also encourage you to develop on the con. This is a pretty strong con argument uh, because it's hard for the pro to generate much offense against this. It basically says that... Uh, Charter schools don't want to take a lot of disabled students because they cost more money to educate relative to other students. Uh, there's very good evidence that says like charter schools, uh, charter schools end up leaving disabled students out. Um, so if they're if the academic outcomes in charter schools are better, then these students are kind of obviously end up being discriminated against. And like I said, it's hard to generate offense against. So I encourage you to pursue that argument. <coughs> There's also evidence that says that, uh, you know, charter schools, that there's a lot of corruption within the charter schools, um, that, you know, charter schools, you know, most, not all, but most are nonprofit, um, but people find other ways to make profits. Okay. So what they do is like a charter, a nonprofit charter school could contract with a, um, a private company uh, to, you know, purchase like all its curriculum and services, right? Um, and the people who started the charter school may own that company. There's evidence that says what some of the charter schools do is that they basically lease buildings. So the owners of the, you know, the people who started the charter school, even if it's a nonprofit, uh, they go and purchase a building. And then the charter school leases the building um, at a very high rate. Um, so, and it's easy for the, um, the purchasers of the buildings to get the loans on the buildings because basically they have a guaranteed contract from the charter school that's being you know provided with uh, public funds. So you can kind of look at that as some corruption. There, um, some people say the regulation really isn't that great. I talked about that earlier, how you could argue it was. There's a good amount of oversight. Some people say it's really kind of lax. There is a lot of high teacher turnover in charter schools. 
Um, at the high end, like charter schools retaining teachers for four years is a lot. Most of them are only retaining teachers uh, for two years. Some people say there's too much standardization, right? Remember the original goal was for charter schools to be, you know, there's kind of flexibility within how you run your charter school, but as a teacher, you may even have less uh, flexibility in your teachers. There's also not as many social services provided, uh, kind of a wraparound approach to protecting the kind of the whole child. Um, so this uh, stuff could go away, um, you know, in a charter school. And, you know, that could hurt children, especially given that we're looking at children who kind of tend to be a more limited socioeconomic status. Other people say, you know, this philosophy of like no excuses um, is bad, that we should kind of uh, hang on to kids for longer, help them more, uh, support them. You know, does the go away word like try to bring them back? So there's a debate about that. So there are some kind of uh, significant criticisms um, of charter of charter schools and it then it come down to weighing. Another broad kind of thought is like, okay, like how much, what does this matter? Like, okay, so there's some small improvement in test scores. Like what does this translate into? Uh, there's some evidence that says these small improvement in test scores, they're not translating into like more college admissions or not, and then they're not translating into uh, people getting better jobs or being better off economically. So it's like, there's really a big push to get these test scores up. Like there's marginal improvements in the test scores, but there's really no impact uh, from this marginal improvement on anyone on anyone's life. So that's the other thing you can kind of say, okay, like pro, even if you're right, like there's some small increase in test scores. It's really meaningless in terms of anyone's life. And as all we're doing is segregating the schools, hurting relation relations, we're hurting the disabled, right? We're hurting the schools overall, meaning draining public funds. So that's a kind of a, a backstop you could think about. I think uh, just in terms of a few concluding thoughts, like one, this is a PF topic in the sense that PF debaters really love statistics and trying to quantify things. Really, I think to the, in my opinion, to the kind of extreme because they're just excluding so many other arguments because usually don't just quantify things so much, but it is persuasive to judge. The statistics are persuasive to judges, right? And like this reminds me of the background checks topics where there were all these random studies. All this is going to like reduce gun violence by like 1% or increase it by like 1% or change this like, you know, by 1%. There's, there's tons of studies that are going to argue for, uh, you know, that kind of claim they demonstrate like small statistical improvements in a particular academic, academic outcome or say, no, they hurt public schools by like X percentage. Um, so there's going to be percentages like flying all over the place from all different types of studies. Why are they different? Well, look, I mean, no, no study is like designed exactly the same way as another. No study really, like it's going to be hard to find two studies that follow, that um, study the exact same charter schools, the exact same populations over the exact same period of time, right? So their data set is not going to be identical. So whenever you change the data set a little bit, you get like, diff you're going to get different results. It's not going to be identical, um, which I think why another reason, like I find the obsession with the statistics a little bit difficult, but like this is going to become like a big, um, you know, a big kind of part of the debates. I think the second thing is that there probably may be small increases in academics, especially for minorities, um, but the schools probably are more segregated. They're probably not for the best for the disabled students. Maybe they put pressure on school budgets. I'm just saying like, if you look, I've read a lot of like a lot of studies a lot of articles about studies over the last few days. And if I could probably just synthesize everything I read, that's probably kind of the general conclusion I would come to about charter schools. So you want to kind of start thinking about big picture, like where you're going to end up in the final focus, how you're going to weigh things out. And then third, as I've mentioned a couple of times at the beginning, what is the quality of education, right? You need a framework uh, to make this work. You need definition, a framework, and how... You know, thinking about the kind of maybe general conclusions I've personally reached, what does that mean for the pro? What does that mean for the con, right? How do you situate kind of maybe some small improvement in academics against these other like kind of like social problems, right? Like it's um, it's a difficult question um, to answer, which is why this is a good debate topic. But you need to start thinking about that.